Ninja. Hi, my name's Rachel and today I'm going to be talking about the cello. Now the cello is a string instrument as you can tell here by these strings and it's actually one of four instruments in the string family. You have the violin, the viola, the cello which is this instrument and then you have the double bass which is the biggest instrument, even bigger than this one. Now what some features of the cello are its strings. So we have four strings on the cello going from top to bottom we have the A string, we have the D string, we have the G string, and we have the lowest one, the C string. There you go, so if we do that again, the A, D, G, and C. Now, there are loads of different pieces that you can use pizzicato in. However, one of the favourite things that I like to do with this effect is play a nice jazzy, funky bass line. So it goes something like this. That was nice and jazzy and funky, wasn't it? Now the other way that you can play the cello is with this. This is the bow and we call playing with the bow arco and it's really simple. You just get your hands like this, put your thumb here, wrap your hand around and there you go, you've got a really lovely cello bow hold and then you just place the bow on the strings and you pull across like that. It goes like this. So if you do that on each of the strings, have the A string, the D string, the G string, and then you've got the C string. The C string is very low, as you can hear, they're really nice and resonant. Okay, so there are all kinds of different techniques you can do on the cello. You can play chords. Now a chord is where you play more than one note at once. So for instance, if we wanted to play a chord, we could take the A string, which is this string, and the D string, and we can play them both together at the same time, using the bow. So like this. And you've got a really nice chord there, which has a D and an A in it. So the A string, the D string, then play together like this. really lovely chord there. Now some other techniques that you can use are things like glissando. Now glissando is where you put one of your fingers on this the fingerboard here. The fingerboard is where you create even more notes on the cello. You place a finger on the fingerboard like this and then you swoosh it up and down. So you go wee up and down the fingerboard just like this. <laughs> Now how you create notes on the cello is by placing fingers on this fingerboard. For instance, if we take the D string and we put our first finger on the D string, we'll create the note E, like this. So, with, so just the D string on its own and then adding the first finger. And then we use all our different fingers to create different notes and with these different notes we can create, can create pieces. And one of my favourite pieces to play is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star.
enjoyed learning about the cello today and please do go and listen to lots and lots of music and I hope you have a good day. Useful signs. Cello. You try. Cello. Music. Your turn. Music. Teach. Your go. Teach. Cooking. Hello everyone and welcome to Super Seren's cooking show. And sloth. Yes, and sloth. Today we're going to be making something based on Sloth's favourite song. Oh, oh, I know this one. Is it Baby Shark? No, Sloth. It's Jelly on a Plate. Oh, I love Jelly. Did you know, in America they're called Jelly Jello and they have a whole week to celebrate it. To make your jelly, you will need gelatin cubes of any flavour, a measuring jug, some jelly moulds, ah yes, and a crown. How do I look? Pretty good. The first thing you need to do is boil the kettle. When you're handling hot water, make sure you have an adult's help. The first thing you need to do is get your slab of gelatin and tear it into cubes and put it in a jug. Now, carefully pour 285 millilitres of boiling water over the cubes. Make sure you get an adult's help. Next, all you need to do is stir until it's dissolved in. Once all of the cubes have dissolved into the water, add 285 millilitres of cold water. Now, pour into a jelly mould and leave to cool. Once the jelly mixture has cooled to room temperature, put it in the fridge and come back when it's set. But what shall we do while we wait? We could feed the fish. Ooh. Pretty fish. Hi fishies. Or paint a guinea pig. That looks good. Do you want to see mine? Of course, Sloth. Do 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 do. Wow, that's looks amazing. Like a guinea pig. Finished. Or you could sing Jelly on a Plate. Jelly on a Plate. Jelly on a Plate. Wibble wobble, wibble wobble, jelly on a plate. Yay! When's my jelly going to be ready? In a minute, Sloth. When your jelly is solid, take it out of the fridge, unmould it and watch it wobble. Useful signs. Jelly. Your go. Jelly. Plate. Your turn. Plate. Fridge. Your go. Fridge. Warning. Dad joke alert. What wobbles and flies through the air? A jellycopter. <laughs> also, what wobbles and can make phone calls? A jelly phone. <laughs> Science. Welcome to Mad Morgan's Music Show. Today I'm going to be performing an original song for you entitled Noise. Hit it! No! What? Wrong script. Oh. Oh, that's better. Hello and welcome to Mad Morgan's Science Show. Today we're going to be talking about vibrations. How does that sound? 
we're going to be finding out how sound is made, why a mouse squeak is so high, and how we hear with our ears. It's time for Mad Morgan's Five Fun Fast Facts. Number one, the oldest recorded song is over 3,400 years old, and it was a hymn. Number two, sound waves can travel through solids, liquids, and gases. Number three, vibrations are what makes sound, even if you can't see them. Number four, when traveling through water, sound moves about four times faster than when it travels through the air. And number five, the speed of sound is around 767 miles per hour. Whew! It's time for the experiment. We're going to be making water xylophones. For this, you will need some clean jars, a fork or a spoon, a tea towel just in case of spillages, and some water. Ah! I meant in a cup. Good job we had the tea towel. Ah. So, first you need to put down a tea towel just in case you spill any of the water, and wash and empty all of your jars and line them up like this. Next, we're going to fill up the jars with water. Fill up the first one a little bit, the second one up to halfway, and the last one all the way to the top, like this. Now take something like a fork and gently tap them to see what noise they make. you should notice is that they all make different pitches of noise. This one makes a high pitch, this one makes a medium pitch, and this one makes a low pitch. If we look at this one, it only has a little bit of water. Maybe if we fill it with more water, it might make a different sound. Now it's lower. You could even try making up your own melody to show your family and friends. That was sound, but why does it work? Well, sounds are made when objects vibrate. That vibration makes the air around the object vibrate, and the air vibrations enter your ear. That's how you hear sounds. You can't always see the vibrations, but if something's making a sound, some part of it is vibrating. Sound waves can travel through liquids, gases, or solids, and the pitch of a sound can be very high or very low. If the vibrations are really quick, then the sound will be higher. And if the vibrations are really slow, then the sound will be lower. Hope that wasn't just a lot of white noise, and I'll catch you next week. Bye! Useful signs. Vibrate. Your go. Vibrate. Sound. Your turn. Sound. Wave. Your go. Wave. Get moving. Hello everyone. For this week's Get Moving, I'll be teaching you some Charleston moves. So get in something comfy and get ready to get moving. To start with, we're going to go over the very basic step, the foundation of the chest. Take your left foot back, then forward, then your right foot forward and back. And keep going in this pattern. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. more of the swing.
time to the beat that your feet are moving. If this one's not comfy, some people go like this. <laughs> this time, we're going to touch the floor on the one. So step back further and lean down. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Try to touch down and kick together. Ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back to the basic. Good job. And throw in some jazz hands at the end. Well done, everybody. Useful signs. Dad joke alert! What is Beethoven's favourite fruit? Banana! Banana! <laughs> <laughs> Nature! Everybody. Today in nature we're going to be heading outside to see what noises we can hear. We're going to be doing some mindfulness. Mindfulness is where you can relax and concentrate on what's happening right now. Listen carefully. What can you hear? Can you hear the birds? Or the wind rustling in the trees?
Look closely. What can you see? Can you see the birds and the insects going about their day? What can you feel? Can you feel the grass on the floor? And what can you smell? Can you smell the grass or the flowers? Now it's time for a game. What's that noise? Listen to the mystery sound and see if you can guess which bird is making that noise. Is that an owl or a crow? That's right, it's an owl. Is this one a robin or a duck? That's right, it's a duck. Is that a chicken or a seagull? That's right, it's a seagull. Head outside and see what songs you can hear. Useful signs. Listen. Your go. Listen. Bird. Your turn. Bird. Song. Your go. Song. Orpheus's song. Sad tales begin with a happy event, just as it goes in this story. We open our tale with the wedding of Orpheus and Eurydice. Gods, nymphs and mortals all were invited to join the couple in celebration of the happiness they could find together with no sign of fear or trepidation. But fear they should. For hidden in the grass lay an evil serpent unnoticed by all. It struck the unknowing bride's ankle, the venom took hold, and she began to fall. Eurydice left them before the underworld, but Orpheus could not accept such fate. He took up his lyre and left straight away, and travelled till he came upon the gate. A mortal's way into the underworld is fraught with dangers, many and unknown. But Orpheus could not leave his new wife. He walked until he came upon the throne. There he found Persephone and Hades, the ruling gods of all the underworld, and petitioned them with soulful music to return his love to the mortal world. <laughs>
the ghosts who listened to his lamenting. Every spirit in these darkened caves found themselves remembering their lost loves and crying out for Orpheus's sake. The king and queen were so moved by this plea, they offered Orpheus a stunning chance. He could lead Eurydice's spirit back, so long as he would make no backwards glance. He agreed to this immediately, thinking the task would be so easy, and began the journey back to his home, beginning to feel a little queasy. He could not hear Eurydice at all, and suddenly worried he had been tricked. Would the gods have freed them so easily when they were known for being so strict? Soon he was coming towards the end, but felt he could not hold himself back. He had to check if she was following still. He turned and felt his jaw go slack. Eurydice was standing behind him, her shocked expression betraying little, as she was whisked back to the land of the dead with a shudder and a quiet rattle. Orpheus tried to follow her again, but found the way back down had vanished. The poet had returned to the mortal world without Eurydice, the woman he had cherished. The End